The special bond that develops between plus-size inflatable robot Baymax and prodigy hero Hamada who team up with a group of friends to form a band of high-tech heroes. Welcome to the Walt Vault with Michelle, Andre, Louise, and me, Emily. We're a family-friendly podcast where we pick a new Disney movie each week. We watch it, share our thoughts, and then relate it to pop culture, fandoms, and anything else that pops into our heads. Enjoy! Hello and welcome to The Walt Vault, episode 58! This is our first episode that we're recording post-marriage. Oh yeah, post-marriage. Oh, but that's not what the marriage song What was that? I, I, was gonna, I was gonna sing a circus song. We're married. You sound like you're singing like a band. Like, exactly. a, march, like a marching band song. <laughs> yep. That's you, you, how bro. exciting it is. This week. Yeah, so we are now a podcast oh, of yeah. two married couples. And yeah. Oh, yeah, we're no longer living in sin. Uh, this week, <laughs> oh my God. we are talking about the 2014 animated Disney film, Big Hero 6. Big Hero 6. Big Hero 6. Oh, Hero. Big Hero. Oh, Hero. What's his name? Hero. I, I believe it's Hamada. Pumata, yeah, you, are, you are very <laughs> awesome. Well, even I'm probably, I should say heroes too much. Cut that out. Woo! No channel that needs some more coffee in their body. That's just the city. No, it's so just the city. Too high. And moving on. Anyways, this movie, <laughs> what did you say? What year was? 2014. Okay, it was like four years ago. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's about right. It's been a while. Raise your hand if you saw it in the theater. You guys can't see us. Yeah, Andre, uh, first impression. I, I did see us. Louise, did we see us in the theater? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't know. I don't know that I did see us in the theater. No, I know I did. Because I remember now why I saw them. Okay. Anyway. Um, <laughs> my first impression. Uh, this movie rocks, dude. This movie is dope. Me likey. Uh, it's a superhero animated movie that technically... Uh, not technically, but is not lame. virtually lives in the Marvel Universe. It's because... basically a superhero origin story movie. Right, yeah, yeah. 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 But it's a team-up movie. It's a team... Uh... Team-up, it's like Avengers. It's <laughs> yes. literally the best come-together movie that I've ever seen. It's much better than the first Avengers. Right now. Nice. Oh, my man. Uh, Olivia said nice. <laughs> yeah, I don't, know. I don't know that I completely agree Basically, the first Avengers like with the way that they come together, right? I and guess they're they like, mean they team up. Yes. In, in the sense of them teaming. They're they're much uh they're much oh, nicer. Yeah, about yeah, it. yeah. God. <laughs> so we can all agree that our first impression is bomb.com. Yeah. Is that is that your first impression, bomb.com? Yes. My my other first impression is that um I guess it's not an impression. Your second it's impression. Fine. That that I was telling Andre, I'm really sad that I never got to see Baymax in the park. So <gasps> if they could bring him back, I'd be True. real happy. True. So if you're cool. listening, Disney bring Baymax. Yeah, let him waddle around. I want, dude. I want one of those like squishy hugs. I want to like put, you know how he like squishes his face yeah. down to like see what's on the inside. I want to do that. <laughs> and uh, he's self heating. Come on, I want to lay on him. Andre, bro. Yeah, dude. That, really that's cool. the best part. I don't like first impression. So good. So good. Yeah. So good. Yeah. Virtually good. no plus. Yeah, this movie is uh. Did Louise watch it with you? Louise did watch it with me. Louise actually really enjoys this movie. Yeah. Good. Louis, you agree? Do you like it? He's shaking his head. He's shaking his head. I'm happy because I was going to be upset if you didn't like this one. No, he really likes this movie. Yeah. I want to know someone who doesn't like this movie. Oh, yeah. I, I, should, I should pull up some batteries for the, for the crack. Um, <laughs> <laughs> good thinking. Um, but, yeah, this, this movie is is fantastic. It's it's awesome. It's uh, I was I was reading up because I don't think I've ever, like, read the um, the comic that this is based on, but I was reading a little bit about it. And it kind of stems from, like, the X-Men universe. Like, there's an X-Men called Sunfire, and he is Japanese. And so in his home country of Japan, they decide to, like, have an Avengers of their own. And uh, and they they bring out all these super smart kids and, and power them up. And, and that's how the big Yeah, it's really like a started. combination of, like, uh, he's, we're getting all these, like, smart Lisa Robinsons-esque kids in here again you know so i like that but also it's um 
Um, this movie feels more Pixar-like to me. Like, I know it's a, a 3D Disney animated movie, mm-hmm. but it has that, like, let's pull out your heartstrings in the first 15 minutes. Oh, it's totally totally Which is right. Pixar, right? Oh, that's so, Pixar um, sure. I, I really love this movie. I feel like it's fairly popular, but I think it should be even more popular than it is. Like, I kind of want to stuff Animal Baymax now. Yeah, it's interesting that I don't see a lot more, you have one more merch. I do have one. It's in the other room. It's okay. And it was so funny because we watched the movie with Addy, mm-hmm. and then I was like, Louis, look at the Baymax, and he's like, no, wait until the end. And right at the end, we pulled out Baymax, and she looks at him and was like, oh, it's oh. here. Yeah, here. And then kissed him. Boom. Boom. But it's so, Major it's love. so good. It's a really good concept. And I think, I mean, obviously, I, I know this movie is very popular in Japan because they have, like, him in the parade floats in the Disneyland parades, like in um, Disneyland Tokyo and stuff. So that would be interesting to see once Andre and I kind of get our bees over there. Um, but oh man, I see Baymax everywhere, but not like the story. You know what I mean? Sure. Like they could totally do like a um, like a ride, like as like you're flying on Baymax or something. You know those um, like Star Tours. Yeah. Like if they did like a big oh, yeah. six, like Star Tours. And they got like the powers of each of the kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm really cool I'm frankly surprised movie. that this movie hasn't been fraught with with sequels. Like this one seems like it's. Ready. Set up for one. Completely set up for all kinds of. Well, they have a TV of, show. They do have a TV show. So there's there's an animated TV, show. Which I've never seen. Disney either. XD. I have a question. When we start the conversation, like like a full conversation about like the city first. Yeah. San Francisco. San Francisco. Background. Yes. I have ever seen in a Disney movie. Even Pixar, I'm sorry, the amount of detail that they have in San Francisco is insane. I read that one frame of the like panning over San Francisco has more data in it than the entire movie of Bolt. What? <laughs> one frame. Boom. That's nuts. That's it's wild. Well, and it's hilarious because now this is where Emily Smart's come in, or lack of. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know much about the architecture of Japan. Meaning, I, if I looked at Tokyo, which I'm assuming, obviously, San Francisco, mm-hmm. yeah, would Tokyo be Tokyo, and would Tokyo. be like the equivalent. But knowing San Francisco being where right. from yes, very yes, well, yes, yes. literally when they very go good. over the port of San Francisco, Luis and I were losing it. It's we were like, so cool to see all this stuff that you have either been to in real life or at least oh. seen pictures of, and it's all like yeah, Japanese yeah. stuff. I said, love. I totally understand what Emily's saying because we frequent San Francisco. We don't live that far from it. We're like an hour and a half out. So it's literally like identical, like all of the buildings. And I love how they do the bridge. Like it's the it's the Golden Gate Bridge, but it has like the tops of the Japanese yes. buildings on it. And that's like that it was has like, like the architectural part. feel yeah. of like so the layout of Japanese the city culture. is yeah. San Francisco with architectural aspects of. Tokyo. I bet it. I, 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 I bet it smells a lot better than San Francisco too. Yeah, I smell fishy. San Francisco is a stinky city. It's still all. It's still <laughs> all their smell fishy either way. They got fish. They got. It's very pretty. Fecal matter. They got all kinds of stuff. Stop. Down this is San not Francisco. the actual San Francisco. Okay, this is a fictional city. I know. That's what I'm saying. It smells cool. better. Yeah, this probably smells better. Oh, noodles. But you know what's so cool too? Like, like think about like when they're going through the streets. Like later on, when he's already he's already like activated Baymax, mm-hmm. and he's, like, going on the tram down the street, or, like, even the, the trolley, like, the trolley yeah. Yeah. Yes. and, like, the buildings, like, that they live in, mm-hmm. oh, my gosh, it's literally San Francisco, it's, it's just so beautiful it's that really they were able cool. to, to capture it, and you would see that, and you'd be like, oh, they're in San Francisco, I don't right, know, yeah. you know, just, like, you get, like, a studio apartment in San Francisco, and all four of us will live there with two babies, it's fine. Why are you trying to raise all of our rents <laughs> for a one-bedroom <laughs> Because <laughs> then, we'll, then we'll go and convince archi- architects to build actual San Francisco, and then we'll become billionaires. This is okay. so much work that I don't want to do. Whatever. <laughs> I do not need to live. I have my separate house. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Valiant effort. Unless you just want the cafe in your, your house, which was kind of cool. Oh yeah, I like. I like to. That's a cool concept. Yeah, right? to like own a restaurant. And I like his aunt, right? His aunt. Yeah. The aunt. Oh, so yes. It reminded me of from Parent Trap. Um. What's, yeah. What's her name? Chessie. Chessie. Reminded me of Chessie. Yes. I believe she was voiced by Maya Rudolph. 
Yeah, the voice cast for this yes. movie is insane. Yeah. Just so you know. It's yeah, pretty very cool. <laughs> Baymax is played by Scott Adsit, who you might recognize as, like, the bald dude from 30 Rock. <laughs> and you, I, I never would have known that, uh, you know, had I not looked it up. La, 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 la. Yeah. It's voiced by me. La, 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 la. Pretty accurate, Michelle. Very, Pretty accurate. yeah. Another thing I like about San Francisco is, um, so we have Hiro. Hiro Humada. Humada, thank you. Hiro Humada is the younger brother of Tadashi Humada, who he, we kind of open on this scene of Hero at a bot fight, which, oh, is, just, so cool. which is so cool because it reminds me of like chicken fights. Yeah. That sounds so bad. No, no, that's exactly like what it fight, is. Right? It's like back but room bot fight. fighting. And I totally forgot about that scene. Mm-hmm. Like when we so watch it, and I'm like, oh, dude, yes, this is so funny. <laughs> because yeah. it was very intense. Like, mm-hmm. they did not kid up by no. I mean, no. a little bit. Like, they, they were betting money. They were betting. Mm-hmm. They, there was danger. Right. There was a yeah. level of stress. Like, Which I, no just, I just feel like they've taken elements of San Francisco like in my head. I'm like, that's probably a real thing in San Francisco. Oh, yeah. Well, probably bot fight, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's just saying. So he all basically swindles this guy into winning all his money. Oh, yeah, he hustles him. Super cool bots. Yeah, he hustles him, right? And they're literally going to attack him, and his brother swings in on his motorcycle, which uh, Tadashi is so cool. Like, I've always wanted uh, an older brother, and I'm like, come on, Tadashi, be my brother. He's so cool. <laughs> so he saves right. him, and he's like, dude, you're way smarter than this. Um, they say that he wrote, what, he graduated when he was 13 mm-hmm. from high school? Yes. Yeah, so he's basically extremely intelligent, and he's probably bored, you know? So he's doing, I want to go fight some robots because I'm bored and have nothing else to do. He can't work. Um, so his brother says, if you're going to bot fight, then I'm just going to drive you there. But really drives him to this super cool school, which in my mind, this is where I was th- saying it's cool. Like, oh, yeah, they missed the part where they got missed. arrested, which was funny. <laughs> oh, they did! <laughs> they get That's into true. like this car chase, mm-hmm. and they end up getting arrested, and Aunt Cass, the aunt, yes. has to come like, bust them out. Them out of jail. <laughs> and it's hilarious because... She's like, I've done everything I can to raise you, and you can tell she's like not a mom. Right. But she's trying really hard to be a mom, and she's just like, ah, I'm so annoyed. <laughs> I know. So she busts the bell, and then they go back out. Yes. And that's when that same like, night. Oh God, you guys, stop. <laughs> go ahead, Michelle. That's so, when. So Tadashi takes him to his school. Nerd school. Nerd school. Which I I I like that because I feel like that's also a school that would probably totally be in San Francisco, like. San Francisco's like a tech haven. If not, just so, like the Silicon Valley in general. Right. Yes. Exactly, yes. So um, this pool is so cool. I, I want to go there too. Yeah. yeah so it's it's very it's, it's very handsome. I'm not smart like that. That's like, really cool. But I just want to go visit. Yeah. yeah. Can I like, like my floors in this place or what? Oh, <laughs> oh, <I'm Fred. laughs> yeah. Yes. Don't exactly. actually go here. Hang out all the time. Right? Fred. Um. I I really I I love the fact that this. A uh, little thirteen-year-old boy that graduated high school like two weeks ago or whatever is calling this place the nerd school. Like, dude, you are mega nerd. Mega <laughs> nerd. <laughs> Don't kid yourself, hero. Um, yes, but Tadashi shows him uh, the nerd school, and we get our first introduction to a few of the. Um... No, all the team members. Oh yeah, it's, it's all of them. All of them. I think. Oh, I think so I think his friend comes in a little bit. The first person he meets. Is the oh, what's his name the the one that likes everything in a particular wasabi. way? Wasabi. Huh? Wasabi. Wasabi. Thank you. Go-go. Yes. Moise just corrected from the couch that it was Gogo you met first. Ah. Uh-huh. Ooh. Boom. Thanks. It was Gogo. Go-Go? Yes. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the same. It's in the same scene. I don't know. Oh. It was. It was. Look at me. Not that the listeners can look at me. He's over there shaking his head. FYI, Moise is very sick, as you can hear. I'm gross. He's grosser, mm. so he's he's on the couch. He's quarantined. He's quarantined. quarantined to Whatever. The he meets wasabi. 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 And wasabi is OCD. What's he? Yeah, he's totally OCD. <laughs> yes. What is he making? Um, I believe he's making <laughs> something that can oh, slice slicer. through all, all oh, matter yeah, like super quickly. Slicing like an apple. So I think like the I think ever. while we introduced the the. The movie characters. I'm gonna go over like the comic book characters and their differences. So okay. Wasabi in the comics, his name is Wasabi No Ginger, um, <laughs> <laughs> which is even funnier than just Wasabi. Uh, he's a trained chef who uses various swords to fight, and he can also um, 
like create knives out of chi energy or whatever. Oh. And, and so they just materialize out of thin air and he like throws them and then they make people go to sleep. So he's like, the they make people go to sleep? Mm-hmm. They don't cut it? They, they, they stab into your body, but they're not like real knives. They're just like energy. So it just makes you go night night. That's wow. actually really cool. cool. Night night knives. I don't know if that's in the comic, but it should be. Not real nice. All right, so similar. He has the slicing thing. I wish his name was Wasabi. That's hilarious. And they just decided to make it very OCD in this movie, which I think is quite. Yeah, and that leads to some hilarious. You can't just go grabbing things. Table and everything outlined. I was like, calm down, sir. I love the way his body is shaped too. Like he's he's like the he's big like a dude. big big boy. He's like a big like upper body guy, yeah. but he he seems like the least yeah, likely legs. to be like the way he is. Right. You know yes. I mean? So mm-hmm. it's really funny to watch him just be like. Ah! Yeah, I will say now I'm pretty sure Luis was right. We did meet Go Go first. When he drives that little tiny Fiat. Like, oh, yeah, that's it. right. <laughs> Love it. Anywho, go-go. Go to go-go. So go-go in the comics, her name is Go-go Tamago. Um, she is known as the hothead of Big Hero 6, so she's she's always just jumping into fights and stuff like that. Uh, she transforms her body into an explosive ball of energy, which can be projected at very fast speeds. So she's not so much skating around as just flinging herself at things <laughs> which is cool. and and to, cool. and to do it to activate she has to say her name go go tamago Ooh. Yeah. but i really i really like her in the movie because she, yeah she's definitely like the quote-unquote like <clears throat> in the hothead of the group you know she's just kind of a ba in the way she looks yeah. and stuff like that but i like how in that like she's making those wheel thingies that are like really fast Right? Yes, yes, her her um anti grav magnet like a powered bike. yeah bike yeah, which yeah. gets transformed. Which cool was that? Into a bike school, cool yeah, at the end of it, it's like her feet. Yeah. Yeah. What well, do you think about it? She kind of reminds me of like a skater girl, like mm-hmm. just her her. Yeah, her, she plays roller. Her first. Yeah. Oh, for sure. <laughs> she plays roller derby. For real, it's so funny. We're talking about roller derby last night. Like, you know those women? They just look like they play roller derby. They're scaring the you know one yeah, side of you. Yeah. No. Oh, intimidating. Well, and then you put like slicer blades on her feet. Yeah. Right? Oh man. Uh, well, and I think her outfit's one of the coolest. It's too. it's I like absolutely she's all purple. Oh, right? Yeah, she's mm-hmm. purple. Well, but she's yeah. well, her hair. It's yellow. Yeah. Those, like, some... her hair purple? Yes. Oh, her hair. Yes. yes. Oh, I'm just saying. I think her outfit might have a little bit of purple accent purple somewhere hair. on there somewhere. Purple oh, hair. But she she looks cool. Yes. Now. She has the coolest. And then we have. Uh, oh, you don't think Fred's outfit's the coolest? No. <laughs> Fred has a pretty cool outfit. Should we go to Fred next? No, Honey Lemon. Oh. Honey Lemon. I like Honey Lemon a lot. Though. Honey Lemon's really cool, too. She, oh, she seems cool. like she wouldn't be much. She seems like she'd be a Barbie doll, right? But she's super smart, and I, I really, really like her <clears throat> her tech. Well, she's the lot. chemist of the group. And yes. she's kind of a while to, like, get through the whole idea of what she does Mm -hmm. but she is all about the chemical reaction right so she's creating kind of whatever she needs Mm -hmm. through her yeah yes and it's it's awesome she just like literally made that giant matter thing disappear she like i don't know yeah all her stuff is really really coolly visualized in in the movie but she's so like quaint and like the way she walks and does things she's little i love honey lemon Mm -hmm. and i i think uh, another thing I noticed about Honey Lemon is, okay, I'm going to say, let's see, San Francisco, I'm assuming is like a mosh posh of all identities and races and cultures, because she seems like she has like the accent to me. Oh, yeah. Like oh, the, yes. like the um, Japanese she, accent. She pronounces hero. <laughs> hero. Hero. Mm-hmm. But like more than the others. Like she, yeah. she's the one that has the accent to me, but she doesn't look as... Um, Japanese. Japanese is the other one. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, I need more backstory on like how San Francisco came to be. Like, what is this place? I know. Yeah. Like, really cool. Pot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really cool. But I, I like her. But what is their origin? Origin. <laughs> I like, I like her the best just because like she's just so different than the others to me. Like you just wouldn't expect her to be like that. And her stuff is really cool. Like when Hero eventually puts like all of the stuff in her. 
purse. She just like pushes all these buttons and it's like, boom, like making her own weapon. I'm like, that's really cool. That's Power super person. cool. Um, yeah, so. And they're visually appealing, like Andre said. Yeah. Like, yeah. Pretty, and they're. It's also like cool. really cool. She blows it up and it turns into powders or congeals into weird gels. I feel like that's what I would do because I, I probably wouldn't want to be like in the action, like go, go, up. like, oh, scary. Mm-hmm. Like, I'd just be making things and throwing them <laughs> at people. Stay back here and yeah, goo these dudes. We need to practice our softball pitching. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, so. Get good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, in the comics. Honey Lemon in the Honey. comics. So she is also, like, in this movie, they're all, like, super geniuses. Um, in the comics, it's, it's less so. It's mostly Hero and Honey Lemon. Honey Lemon is also super genius. So she creates her power purse. Um, mm-hmm. And and her, her power purse in, in, the, in the comics is a little bit different. She can create, like, portals. Yeah. And um, she can manipulate matter and do all kinds of stuff but it is she pulls balls out of it and tosses stuff well that's still really cool it's, it's well, awesome. and, and that's i think where when i think about just her powers like not so much her or the characters but just the powers it definitely fades into the x-men universe mm-hmm. more than like our avenger marvel universe sure yeah um they're like creating their own yeah kind of stuff. because the Avengers are all very, not all of them, but a lot of them are suit powered. Yeah, they're techie. And, or smart, or mm-hmm, whatever. Mm-hmm. And the, the, I want to call it the Wolverines. <laughs> the, X-Men, the X-Men. The Wolverines. Are all there, are, are more likely to be, um, what are they called? Why can't I think They're just like a. No, no, there's a word. Oh, mutants. Right. They're mutants. mutants. Yes, they're all mutants. So they all have like a gene in them that makes them be able to do all these cool things. Yes. And pretty much all the things you just said are like, is like a mold between four or five of the characters mm-hmm. in the X Men universe. Yes. Like the girl with the portals. That was the coolest yes. thing. What movie was that in? That, that was the Danger Pack. That was best. I've That's only Blink. seen. How many have I seen Blink? We've only seen <gasps> Okay, first off, Miss Witch Pass. Super cool. Yeah, that's the best. That's one of the best. Ooh. The only thing I know from X Men is that the movie. Night, Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler. What does he do? I don't know. He was on a ceiling. Uh, that could be either of them. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it's just cool that, like Andre was saying, it's so cool to see an animated version of almost like an origin story for that type of universe. Yes. Um, even if, and, and the funniest thing too is that like we're not really sure where the mutant gene came from. Right. Like yeah. in the X Men world, so it's funny that like. Maybe this could be like the origin of the new movie. Sure, yeah. Because who knows? They can like start the alternate movies and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's like, that's that's I like this universe. Like, I'm sure the TV show is definitely geared towards children and stuff. Oh, sure. Well, they could give me some some uh, Netflix show with real people. I'll watch it. <laughs> a live yeah. action Big Hero 6? No, no. I am like a live action Big Hero 6 TV show. Right, yeah. yeah. yeah oh, right. only you said the movie, so. I just don't know what Big Mess would look like. No, he looked like the marshmallow man from, um, or the, was it the Michelin man? Or was it marshmallow? Which one are you talking about? He yeah. looks like both of them. The, the Stay Puff like man? The yes! Stay Puff from, from, from Ghostbusters? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's what he looked like! Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, scary, intimidating, and fluffy <laughs> all the same time. Exactly. So uh, then, uh, does Tadashi have powers in the comic? Or so, is he... Tadashi is yeah, not really, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Tadashi is not really part of the comics. Tadashi was made up for, the, for, the, for the movie, I'm pretty sure. In in the comics, it's Hero's father who like who has like the um the plans for for Baymax, who I don't think is is built. I think Hero actually builds him, but he he's the one who who dies and okay. leads, leads Hero. Yeah. So then we have the leader of the group, um, Fred. <laughs> <laughs> the leader of the group. <laughs> Tell me. That you don't know now, Fred's Angels. Fred's Angels. I don't know. Are you still know. making a face? Because last time we did this, you said you didn't know what. You didn't yeah, know when he sings the song. When they're walking through oh. the life. Yeah. Oh, like, that's right. He like pops his head up and he's like, Fred's Angels. Fred's Angels. <laughs> like a Charlie's Angels. He's like twirling around and he's like, Give him the bad guy. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Okay, I just need a head nod. Who needs to sleep? I need a head nod. Did Fred annoy you? Yeah. Darn, <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. I'm pretty sure Fred did not annoy him. Oh, which is very weird. That's right? cool. Fred is has no superpowers. Fred is. Did Fred annoy you? No, it was funny. It was funny. Okay. It was funny. All right. Look uh, at him being all. Honey lemon annoyed me though. Oh yes, oh, honey lemon annoyed me. Well, she's eccentric. I mean, she's cool. I like her. She yells. She yells. Yeah. Oh, she kind of does talk really loud. Sure. Probably she's like very it. enunciated. Yeah, I, I talk like that. I don't know why I put a British accent on this podcast. Enunciated. 
<laughs> um, Fred is in the movie is played by T.J. Miller, who you might recognize from Deadpool or um, what else was he? He's in Silicon Valley. But in everything that T.J. Miller is in, he plays almost this exact same dude who's just like lazy, kind of insane, and um, is down for anything. Kind and, of insane. Fred <laughs> is insane, dude. And he has issues. He but it's but it's awesome because it, he's basically typecast the same character in every every single thing that he's in. But he he does it very well every time, and I'm I'm a, I'm a fan. Um, well, here's the fun thing is that I keep forgetting that Fred does not go to school there. <laughs> right. Yeah. He is literally he's a mascot. Mm -hmm. He's a mascot. He's a mascot. He's a mascot. Yeah. He flips the sign and wears like an outfit. And so FYI, that's exactly what he does in, it, uh, on the team. On the team. He wears an outfit. Oh, nobody breathes fire. Because, yes. Which is which very is just cool. cool. But, the outfit is so but even at one point at the end, he's like grabs a piece of sheet metal and he's like flipping it like the sign. <laughs> Yeah, so, so. He, he got it. He got it together. Superhero mascot. He's a, he's, a, he's a fire breather. He's the he's the the glue. Yes, he's the heart of the team. Yeah, so he basically just goes to this college because he's trying to get them to make tech to make him a superhero. Yes. And they're like, "Who's so him to do that?" And he's like, "Mm-hmm." Mm -hmm. Wrong. They keep saying it's not science, and I'm like, "Not friends." I mean, science. Science. I'm about that. Pretty that. much science if you can do it. He's you know. Like, Invisible sandwich, so that you can eat a sandwich, but nobody can see it. And, everyone, and they literally think he's insane, but they're just like, what up with that? Like, okay, I here. love it. Yeah. And he's the one who gave them, quote unquote, all of their nicknames. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which I think is really funny. Which is cool. Which makes more sense as to why you call someone. Ask a little wasabi on me one time! <laughs> 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 so good. Um, so in the comics. And hold on, you know that really made him really mad. Oh, yeah. Because he, you know. <laughs> Things. Right, yeah, he's he's very uh, proper and <laughs> oh, <laughs> anything. Wasabi, no ginger. Um, <laughs> so basically, after this little meeting, wait, I got to I have to talk about Fred oh, I'm sorry. more. Fred in the comics, instead of just wearing like a monster outfit, he can channel the spirit of a kaiju monster. So he has just like Godzilla living inside of him, basically at all times. So he like can breathe fire and he can get I don't I don't think he actually physically grows in size, but like the 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 Godzilla like appears out of his back and like can pick stuff up and, and throw things. That is and weird. It's wild. Wow. <laughs> it's awesome. That is insane. Me like it. <laughs> yes, he is really Godzilla. Funny. I love it. Fredzilla. Oh, wow. <laughs> so um after he meets all these, he meets the professor or the head of the. Yes, the head of the um the of, school. Yes, the, or, or that department yes. of the school. Robert Callahan is that? Yes, is? yes. Callahan, okay. Professor Callahan. Yes. And who is apparently like a very famous tech guy, so Hero loses his mind. Right, he's right. Um, and then immediately he's like, I have to go to school. <laughs> right. So his brother helps him um with. And an experiment to get there. But before that, um, they, they're showing like all of their projects that they're working on, but Tadashi introduces Hiro to what he's been working on, which is Baymax. Baymax. The healthcare professional. Yeah, which is like a really cool idea, honestly. Is a robot that's just your doctor at all times and you don't ever have to. I told Andre, I was like, oh, you never have to build a doctor again. It's great. Right. So yeah. talking about like how that would cripple the healthcare. Um, industry. Which would be awesome. I would be super cool with that because Bring it I don't have to pay all this for industry. <laughs> um, but here's the deal. I remember watching this movie the first time and being like, this sounds awful. Mm. But I remember they showed you all the other people's like inventions that they're working on. And then Tadashi shows in Baymax. And then the, and my first instinct was like, okay. <laughs> well, and like right. a lot of yeah. like, yeah. And basically it's, all of the previews are, were like Baymax, Baymax, Baymax. I think, because right, so I didn't even know the storyline. I was like, wait, there's superheroes going on? Like, I didn't know it was a superhero oh, yeah. movie. So, even when you do meet Baymax at first, it's kind of like, I was, oh. It was a little anticlimactic. Yeah. Only, it's not like story-wise it was anticlimactic. I think it was supposed to kind of do that to you. Right, yes. Where you were like, I mean, it's cool. It sounds it's, super cool. It's nice. But, but then he ends up being, like, the coolest. Yes. Like, there's nothing cooler than that. that's there. totally, I mean, his brother, you can tell, like, Tadashi just wants to help people. So, mm -hmm. like, that's his way of doing it. 
And even Hero's like testing it. He's like, oh, I'm allergic to that. And he's like, no, you're not. <laughs> I scanned you. I scanned you. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's really, like, he's really, really cool. I like it a lot. And so, yeah, he wants to go to the school, and he just decides to make his own little experiment, which is also insane what he comes up with. I'm like, where has this kid's brain been? Because he's only, what, 13? What do you call them? Microbots? Microbots, Microbots yeah. Microbots, yes. Um, let me talk about Baymax real quick, because Baymax in the comics, um, so he was designed by Hero, but uh, Hero's father created the AI. So so he, he creates Baymax to be a butler, basically, <laughs> a butler chauffeur. And then as they get more into like the superhero realm, he becomes his bodyguard and he starts outfitting him with weapons and stuff like that. <laughs> and at one point in the comics, he is able to make Baymax turn into like the living embodiment of a dragon or something like that. Like he programs in like like uh like some metamorphosis kind of stuff and so baymax like turns into like a dragon and can fight so he's not a healthcare professional at all he is not a healthcare professional oh, just... yes well i like to be a healthcare professional right yeah i like I that too i thought it was very handy mm-hmm. he was so cute mm. if i provided your care what did are, it you say? are you satisfied are you satisfied with your care yes mm-hmm. i care about the activating so you said you're satisfied and yeah. body of other people that's because we're used to the Baymax environment. That's true. We've gotten used to it. Can you imagine if it was the other way around and he like he was the healthcare and what? <laughs> Someone was a glorified nurse. Yeah, yeah. basically. And honestly, Baymax looks Fluffy really nurse. weird. Like, I, I, his face is so, his head is so tiny compared to the rest of his body. <laughs> he's, I, I told Andre, I was like, he's the original DJ Marshmallow. That's where Marshmallow got that idea. <laughs> I mean, I think we might have gotten an idea from an actual Marshmallow, but, you know. Marvel's that... movie. <laughs> we saw Baymax and was like, ooh, great outfit. <laughs> great outfit. I'm going to copy it, but more boxy. Um, so, Hero presents his nanobots at the convention to try to get into the school. Um, and they're really, really cool what they can do, but also... I can see how those are extremely dangerous. Right. It's cool how he comes up with them because he bases them off of his his hustling robot that he uses in the very beginning and just the design of it, how it can twist and turn in any direction and separate and come back together. And then he min- minimizes that form factor and then greatly expands it to just millions Yeah, I, I need spots. to know how he's able to control them with his brain because they don't explain that. They're just like, you put this on, you think it, and it works. So I'm like, hmm. I mean, yeah, he's so a neural link to that? all of the, the bots and they come together. Yeah, yeah. but it, it, I just needed like <laughs> the one line. Like in the brain, so like, I right. needed like <laughs> one line of like, this is why it works. You know what I mean? But I get it. It's like a superhero movie and it just works. But you know what's really funny is that, did you guys catch this part? He says, if you think it, microbots can do it. Mm-hmm. Yes. Where's what that is that from? Is that from, um, oh, TZ. it's TZ. like, TZ. uh, <sighs> oh, it is. Yeah. Oh, I was thinking that it was like Lego or something like that. Oh, right. <laughs> if you think it, you can do it. Mm. That's what oh. Walt Disney said. So uh-huh. it was funny when he said that, I was like, if you think a microbots can do it, I was like, all right, fine, <laughs> whatever. And, but he... I don't know. They're very cool. I definitely want some. Did I think about think that the box at the beginning was like Mickey Mouse? Yeah, I did. Yes, it okay. definitely has some Mickey Mouse. Because it had like the black body mm-hmm. and it had like like the little the yeah. pointies, pointies coming ears, out of his I mean, head. They were like, why would you have ears like that? Yeah, right. I thought that too. Like his face. Yeah, a little bit. He was Mickey Mouse. Um, so basically his microbots are super successful. Everybody likes him. But this outside tech company comes up to him and wants to buy it. So we're introduced <laughs> to another character yeah. who ends up being the rival of Professor Callahan, and his name is Evil Guy. Alistair Cray. Come on, tell me that doesn't sound like a Alistair, Alistair Cray. Cray. Yes, so Alistair Cray and Professor Callahan are rivals, apparently. They He's a good looking animated dude, though. <laughs> well, Alistair Cray. Yeah, that's kind of weird. But, <laughs> so, um, he, he wants to buy Hero's Tech, and Hero says no, and he decides to go to the school to develop it more, right? So, he decides to go with Professor Callahan and his friends. So, they leave. I don't remember when Hero leaves the building. Uh, they when does he leave? They, they, like his, oh, to talk. Yeah, yeah they're like, good job, brother. Or, Yay, good job. High five. Uh, you know, having a little moment. But then. Everything's on fire. The school. Yes, we don't get to see what causes the fire. We don't know what causes the fire, um, but 
Tadashi wants to go in there and save Professor Kaiya, and he dies yeah. because it explodes. And yeah. I'm like, come on! And it's Disney very, slash basically takes off. It's very visceral the way it happens because Tadashi runs in. Hero is upset and he's about to run in after him, and then a just a huge explosion goes mm-hmm. off, and it's like, well. <clears throat> well, and I'm glad Michelle, and I, I'm not making fun of you. I'm, I'm really mean. I'm glad mm-hmm. the way that Michelle said it because she just gla- she just glazed over it like it was not that big. Yeah, of I'm not trying to talk about I mean, it. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't. Him. I remember in the movie theater, and I know that we I watched jumped, the movie I jumped. I was like, I literally was like. Oh heck no! Like, I <laughs> yeah, because I really, really liked Tadashi. Right, and I was yeah, like, so we guy. don't. I can cuss right now. I was like, so we don't get any of him. It's <laughs> freaking rude. He got his hat. Well, got, that was got his hat and his uh. And then it even sadder because Hero, if we think about it, he is 13 years old and had is He's already smart, has parents. no parents, now has no brother, and he basically just goes into a hole, right? And he just is in his room, not eating, not doing anything, oh, so awful. until. Depression. Uh, he accidentally activates Baymax. Yeah, what does he do? He stubs his toe, and Baymax, and Baymax comes alive. And pops he up. didn't realize he was still there. But it's, oh, and then we just get, okay, now I really like Baymax, right? Because it's like everything from this point on that comes out of Baymax's mouth is pure gold. And mainly, it's not even things he says, it's his body movement. So, like, even then when he's activated, he's on the other side of the bed, and he's, like, looking, and he looks around, and then he, like, scoops the side, <laughs> yeah. and, like, picks up something and slowly moves it, and then looks at Hero again. And it starts scooting. Like, it takes him so just, long to get up. He's so and big and bulbous that his entire body language is just funny. Just everything that he does, everything the whole way that he moves when he doesn't have any armor on is just silly. And I love it. It's everything. Is I am silly. not fast. <laughs> <laughs> I am not fast. Oh, I can, I can quote, and I was quoting him all, like, the next week at work. People, so I would just see like stuffed animals at work, and I was like, "Airy baby." <laughs> <laughs> all the kids were looking at me like, "What is she saying?" I was like, "So, so funny, baby." <laughs> so good. I well, love it. Extra funny because if you really think about it, which we, we kind of talked about the way Baymax looks, he has no mouth. Right. He has literally zero facial expression mm-hmm. except for his eyes blink. Yes. But if you think about that, that makes it even more funny because his body is what's funny. Like yes. Well, and I think Tadashi said expression. he was going for like a, I don't know, non-intimidating or unintimidating or something. Right. I'm like, yeah, but that's like a, I don't know, a <laughs> balloon. So funny. And then he like is like a Teletubby because the thing shows up on his yeah, stomach. Yeah, it's on his, like, yeah. his belly. Oh. <laughs> and then when he warms up, he like turns a little bit red and stuff oh. like that. So I like when it's like on a scale of and, and the thing keeps it, the books are falling on to, on hero and it's like on a scale of on a scale of on a scale of one to ten how would you rate your pain and he's like I'm not in any pain crying is a natural response to pain <laughs> I can't I can't handle him like I I don't know I mean I get that they're trying to make him funny but it's funny because the things that he's saying aren't. Like, without context, they're not funny. You know what I mean? Would that but... stabilize your pubescent mood swing? <laughs> <laughs> what? Yes, oh, gosh. Pubescent. <laughs> <laughs> or when he's like, <laughs> when he doesn't yeah. know what's going wrong with Hero, so he puts his hand on the computer, and Hero's like, what are you doing? He's like, downloading an entire database on emotional something. Yeah. <laughs> Diagnosis. Puberty. <laughs> <laughs> and he just, like, has one finger pointed in the air. <laughs> Tweet that includes calling friends. And he calls them all on his stomach. <laughs> no! <laughs> Poor, but honestly, it's exactly what I think. That when I think if I was a teenager and like my mom was doing it, I'd be so pissed off. Oh, oh yeah. So it would be So he's literally awful. so mad because it's like the one thing left of his brother, but he's also in Hero's mind acting like a complete jerk. He's like, great! <laughs> My brother's still him. here trying to do everything for me, yeah. which is also kind of cute, but, you know, it's special. <laughs> you know, or what does he say? Tadashi is here. Tadashi is here. No, it's not. Everyone keeps telling me that. Tadashi is here. Yeah. The way he talks is, like, cute. It's, it's precious. Mm-hmm. It's, it's awesome. Anyway, I, I so he calls. So funny. So Baymax is just up, right? Because 
hero refuses to say he's satisfied with his care because he's just in denial that he doesn't need help, right? Right. So he sees one he's of just up. He <laughs> sees one of his little tiny robots in his brother's pocket. So his his clothes have been sitting there, obviously. Right. Um, and one of the little nanobots was there. So all of them had gotten destroyed, in quote unquote, in the fire. But that one's trying Some to talk. leave. <laughs> the baby just like. Your tiny robot's trying to go somewhere. <laughs> okay, so he follows it. He puts it in a leave. petri dish and lets it yeah. lead him <laughs> across the city. Well, the idea city. is that they all call to each other, or they or all connected. Yes. Uh, a hive mind type of thing yeah. going mm-hmm. on. So there should be no reason that it wants to go somewhere because it's the only one left. Right. Yeah. Anymore. He hasn't created it anymore. So then Hero's finally like, what's going on? Like, he has to know, right? Because it's related to his brother's death, obviously. Um, so then they it takes him to well, first of all he doesn't want to go and here and freaking Baymax is like I'll find, I'll find it that's when he says well it's stabilizing oh. your he <laughs> and he's like yes yeah whatever so he's like okay he's just like walking out in the oh, like the way he moves his feet is like little tiny like, little <laughs> tiny like movements little right witty waddles but he, yeah he's like weevil wobble so he like he like kind of moves like it well you guys can't hear me. Like, <laughs> top um, half is swaying yes yeah, so he's Bottom just like is... running through the street and Cyril's like oh my gosh but he runs after him and they end up like in an abandoned like ship warehouse, warehouse yeah. thing where uh there are buckets full upon buckets full of these nanobots but like huge theater 3d printers that the are best part before that is when they're trying to break into this place and they have to be quiet right if baymax doesn't fit through the door and he's like hold on now i be free <laughs> <laughs> and then the end the was like, are you done? And he just holds his finger up, like, wait a minute. And he starts doing it. Like, this movie, guys, is pure comedic gold. Yes, this is very sweet. Well, and it's funny that, like you're saying, there's, it's not... There's nothing funny about what he's doing. Well, it's like, not without context. Sure. Sure. And it's not... Like, Baymax is doing He's just a robot funny. doing what he's supposed to yeah, do. Like, it's funny. Well, and it's not... Script, I mean, it's scripted in, in a obvious way, but it's thing, not yeah. like dialogue. It's not like jokes. No. no. And sometimes you don't need jokes it's for it to be. physical easy. humor. Oh, gosh. He's literally just deflating himself a bit, but he can't <laughs> do it through the door. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> and then he even inflates, too. He starts, and it sounds like an air mattress, yeah. but like, I'm yes. pretty sure they use that exact sound. <laughs> Like it sounds like an air mattress. So blew it up. <laughs> Vacuum hose. Oh my god. Yeah, so yeah, he basically finds buckets and, buckets and buckets and buckets and oh, they're not even buckets, they're like Oil drums. oil drums, basically. Yeah, full yeah. of his nanobots, which is insane. There are millions of them. And point. then uh, just a creepy dude and a creepy mask. It's wearing a kabuki mask. mask. It's like very kabuki. Yes, thank you. And it's also very scary. Yeah. Um so then you kind of see also the full effect of what his nanobots can do because yes, basically he's trying to get him off the premises. And I like how like this evil do they call him anything? Not really. Um, he has a evil name. Guy. They call him evil guy. I'm pretty sure. Um, the guy with the mask. I feel like. But I, I think they don't know who he is. Right, but I think the character has a name as well. I just don't remember what it is. Nor can I find. Well, it's scary because like in the comics, if you have like a villain name or something. Um, I don't, I don't. I think this villain was made up for for the movie. Mm. Well, because it's very contextual to this. Yes. Yeah, but it's interesting because I remember seeing this and being like, "Wow!" Like this, this movie immediately took a turn that I was not expecting. Right. Because. Up until this point, even though Tadashi had passed, mm-hmm. it was pretty fun loving. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. And even Tadashi was like, no offense, it was a Disney moment. Sure. Because mm-hmm. something tragic has to happen to, to get your hero, literally his name's hero, <laughs> going in the right direction or going in another direction. But like the moment you see this scary dude in the yes. mask, like it is pretty frightening. His name like, is Yokai, which I believe in Japanese means phantom. Oh, oh okay. Yokai, you can call him that. <laughs> Yokai. Yokai. Seriously, they're fine. I was terrified. Yeah, like, and the way that he like moves all the yes, like, 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 time. I told that I got a lot of Kylo Ren vibes from him. I don't oh, know sure, why, yeah. but just like the way he moved and he had this like long cloak thingy, he really reminded me of Kylo Ren. But like I think well, it, it looked a, like he was using the Force. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Like, to move. Yeah, maybe that's why I think that because you can't see him wearing that thing because he has the mask on. 
but you really get the full effect of what the nanobots can do, which, I mean, even from the thing, from the beginning, I was like, ooh, these can be dangerous, like, when he's doing the presentation. And then I also, usually, I guess, spoiler alert, we, we know who he is, but usually I wouldn't have figured it out that quickly, but for some reason with this movie, I did. Did that take you guys a while to well, figure it out or not? in the movie. Like, it's... as soon as the microbot tried to escape, I was like, oh, Callahan well, alive. okay, so in the oh, in the know. movie, no. it's it's very much presented as um, Hero shows up with the microbots, Callahan is there, he's the nice mentor to Tadashi, and then Alistair Cray comes in, and he's like the big wig uh, industrialist trying to he's buy up property. Like, so you're supposed to think it's Alistair, but I never Alistair did. Cray for sure. Um, and well, I think, he wasn't a bad guy, even though Callahan said that he cut corners. I think he did. Mind, he was like he was like um like uh, weaselly. A little bit. Sure. I, yeah, but I didn't. I didn't ever think he was a bad guy. No. You know what oh I mean? my God, Weasley. That's a great. Uh, uh, the the Alistair Cray, he was played by Alan Tudyk, who plays the Duke of Wesselton in Frozen. Wesselton. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> so um, he was a little bit Weasley. So I had. I this was one of the. I never figured this stuff out, but this one I actually did. I was like, sweet, I got it. But I did not know what Weasley was. Yeah. Like, I didn't know why I got it, which is where this movie got me with a lot of the backstory, which I absolutely love because I created so much more depth. But after he escapes from Yokai, uh, he goes. He goes. He uh, jumped out a window. A window. Out a window. <laughs> no, he does it like that. That's right. That's what because his power is going down. So what happens? They escape so, very nearly. Yeah, it was very uh, close. Well, and one of the things I was gonna say about the nano, uh, microbots. microbots, thank you. Which is so weird is if you pay attention to like the animation style. When Hero uses them versus when Yoka uses mm -hmm. them, heroes are very like circular. They yes, have like a really rounded. pretty rounded, very Disney esque like, like a, circular it's, motion. It almost like magic. Yeah, you know? and waves, yes. and very pretty. And when Yoka uses it, I think that's like what, what terrified me the most was that everything is super it's angular. harsh and rigid. That might well, also be all stab him with why, you, why you think it looks like Kylo Ren, because Kylo Ren's like lightsabers, all yeah. like frigidy. Yeah. And yeah. Well, I'm telling you, immediately, like I mean, I don't think Force Awakens was out, and it's like, upon no, this watching, and I was like, oh, we like Kylo Ren. Well, and like when he stands on, the, like say he's using the nanobots to like stand up onto like a platform, it he uses gets, his hands a lot. He uses his hands, and it gets up, but then it'll move forward, and it literally, like the microbot shape is scary looking. Right, yeah. Like, it's just, ooh, Which is also funny that he like uses his hands so much because he doesn't have to, right? You just think it. Sure, you can. But he's like, it. like, like he's using the force. Yeah. That's probably it's where like he gets those vibes from. Mm -hmm. So, yes, yeah, so basically, it's, it's they, a lot of passion. Yes. Yeah, they escape, <laughs> barely, by jumping out a window. And then, Hero is like, what just happened, right? But they have to get... So, he goes to the police station and he's like, <laughs> telling, he's like telling the cop, he's like, and the cop's like, so there's a guy. Who stole your tech and you're trying to tell me he's more of the Kabuki masking? He's like, Yeah! Like, what happened? He's like, Baymax, you were there, tell him. But Baymax is uh, way more into fixing himself with some tape. Yeah, so Baymax is. Eh, Once again, something that really shouldn't be that funny, but it is, um, you yes. know? So he just has holes he in it, he's trying to reinflate. He's like, Hmm, I'm going to take this up. <laughs> he takes it up the little holes. <laughs> He's using so much tape. That that scene like really reminds me of the scene in Zootopia, Zootopia with the sure. with the sloths. Yeah, it's just like this kind of office setting where like let's just make some really slow humor. But it's like really funny because it's so slow. Yes, exactly. Yes. So but then he tells Baymax, he's like, they might sell him, and Baymax like, we don't got a window. Right. Yeah. Tell him because he starts moving all his battery power. So we have to get him home. This is the best drunk. part of the movie, hands down. When he's like taking freaking Baymax home, he's like deflated, acting like a drunk baby. Yeah, like, looks like a drunk baby. Literally looks so like, funny. well, and even my coworkers were talking about this movie, they're like, that's totally how I act when I'm drunk. Like, just <laughs> falling over, like petting a cat, being like, hey, we're <laughs> like, hey, we're yes. Drunk Baymax, I think, is, is my favorite. He's I like when he's walking. Oh, my favorite part, though, of that is he goes to walk up the first stair. Like, he takes one foot up the stair, and the foot doesn't even hit it. His head just goes forward. <laughs> <laughs> Which is just hilarious. Oh. Um, We've all seen that person, and it's so funny. Right, yes. <laughs> to be that uh, messed up. You just gotta, just gotta no, it's funny up. to be the person bystanding. Right. Or, 
to be the bystander. Like, you don't want to be that person. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Because you guys just help Some her. great Baymax <laughs> humor in this. Like, mm-hmm. physical humor. Mm-hmm. You know? Just just wonderful. Um, so after that, he... I guess he's just trying to figure out what just happened. Like, who is this person? And he makes a plan to basically set out again. Like, he wants to go again. Right, he wants again. to figure out. Because I think when he was in the abandoned warehouse, he sees, like, a logo or something like that mm-hmm. that he slightly recognizes. So he does some so research goes, on that. he goes again um, to this, like, abandoned shipyard area. Like, he uses well, his... He, well, he uses outfit, his But nanobot. first, yes. He has to outfit Baymax, Outfit though. Baymax. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, he Baymax 2.0 like, comes out. like, some ninja fighting abilities in him. Yes, he programs in some martial arts. And he builds... Which is funny, because it's like, he takes it, like, from a movie. <laughs> yes. And, like, copies it, basically. Which and, is pretty smart. Also. And then he builds uh, some rudimentary armor that, uh... <laughs> when, when he's trying to put it on over Baymax's belly, Baymax is like, I have some concerns. <laughs> <laughs> well, and talk about the funniest block. Oh, in yes. that first one. Because he's like... <laughs> he's, he can't move his legs, he literally hops back. <laughs> oh, and, he's, and as soon as he puts it on, he's like... Do you actually think program me for this? Like, <laughs> he's like, what are you doing to me? I'm not built. He's clearly not built for fighting, right? right. Like, he's yes. a little pudgy. <laughs> pudgy <laughs> he's a pudgy though. nurse. <laughs> but he gets there, and uh, he <laughs> and he also teaches him how to fly at that point. No, no, no. no, no. Okay, so he doesn't fly. So he uses his nanobot, goes basically to this abandoned shipyard. Um, and it leads him to the ocean, so he thinks his nanobot's broken, like it leads him to the water. And I think I think that while while t- uh, Hero is creating like the armor and stuff like that, Baymax is worried about him. Worried yeah, about we're Hero. talking about that. So he calls. So he his calls friends. his friends. Yes. Yes. So well, and when he goes back, there's nothing there. Remember? To the warehouse. He goes yes. back to the warehouse and there's nothing there. So then he's like, Oh my gosh! And that's where that's where the friends come in, right? No, no, the friends come in. He goes out to the docks. He's fighting them oh, at the docks. Right. And then the friends just show up in the car and he's like, run, run. And they're like, we're worried about you. And he's like, you better run. And then the thing like attacks all of them. <laughs> yes. So then they barely escape that. Gotta get out. Uh, and freaking uh, anyway. Go Go has to take over the car because Wasabi's driving so slowly. <laughs> he's stopping at red lights. <laughs> he's like, why are you putting your blink rocks? Like, you don't stop in the car, Jay. <laughs> Ridiculous, right? Yeah. So once they get back to the, they go to the college, I think, and they're like, "What's going on?" Well, they like and they then, like crash into the river, and then yeah, uh, they get to the college. Don't, they, go don't back. they don't they go to Fred's house? Oh, yes. Oh, go Hold on, we got we're, we're missing like the coolest car chase. Yes, this chase was, this chase was awesome. Oh, so it, it winds you all the way through San Francisco, and mm-hmm. you see all of the the major landmarks and stuff, which is fun. Hilarious, <laughs> and. Scary nanobot guy is doing scary nano or yeah, microbot he's things. Moving so fast through the city, just on the microbots, which is it kind awesome. of pro Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. Like he's skating almost, but in a creepy way. Yes, creepier. And he keeps up with them. Yeah. Which is extra scary. It's so he moves very fast. Um he basically just wants to kill them. They're like, he's not trying to kill oh, us, is he? Oh, oh he was. <laughs> yeah. No, Luis and I said that a couple different times. We were like FYI, this dude is straight up ready to kill. Like, he is yeah. not, he is on a pursuit. He's not messing around. Yeah. yeah, which is very unethical. Like, right, yeah, it's, it's just, like, very morally wrong. Especially knowing that it is... Who it is. Who, it, is it, it is Callahan, and he's he's on a revenge mission against Cray because of what he did to his daughter, which we'll get to. But, but these like, are his quote-unquote lovable students. These are his students. He knows all of these kids, and they're just in his way. And yeah, but he at will that stop point, at nothing to get, to get his revenge. Yeah. So which That's makes him rough, dangerous. That's very dangerous. Yeah. So he pretty much attach, attaches them, mm-hmm. uh, attacks them into the river. Yes. Well, not even the river, excuse me, the bay. Into the bay, yeah. Which is rough because if you've ever been to San Francisco, mm-hmm. I don't know about Tokyo, but if you've ever been to San Francisco and you've ever touched that water, it's cold as ice. It's cold. It is stinky. <laughs> there's the seals. And cold. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, though, hypothermia. Like, that's why Alcatraz is out there, because <laughs> yeah. you get out, it's fine. Yeah. You go, Have you go fun swimming to the shore. And but they next uh, sw- um, splints him up. Yes, he does. Yes, and I wrote, off his armor. I literally wrote, thank God for Baymax, because they would have not been getting out of that. That was four teenagers stuck in a car. Exactly. They're not teenagers, excuse me. You know, middle. Mm-hmm. Stuck in a car. And one teenager. And mm-hmm. one, and one bitty. <laughs> and he literally floated them up got them warm, and then walked them 
to Fred's house. To Fred's house. <laughs> yeah, they went to Fred's house, Fred's which idea. is another of the best parts oh, of this movie. Oh, my God. Like, so I'm like, and Goku's like, I literally thought he was like, in a shack. Like, <laughs> or he, she, I think she said she thought he was homeless. Like, they roll up outside of a mansion. Mm-hmm. It's not just like a really nice house. They roll up outside of a mansion. mansion. He's just like, yeah, my parents are But Butler opens the door. Like, can you just like, come in? And they're like, uh, no. Right, right, Fred, we can't walk we into this place. <laughs> I don't even know what his... Well, I don't even think he knows what his parents do. He right, says no, they're no, always no. on their private island, right? So he's yes. got this giant mansion that's not with his butlers like his homies. His butlers like his only probably raped him, mm-hmm. you know? So it's just so funny. And then we go to his room, right, where they're going to talk about what to do. And there's just comic book and nerd stuff every It's like Andre Heaven. Heaven. Yeah. Literally <laughs> like Dungeons and Dragons craziness it's going so on in there. Cool. And he's got art all on the walls and he's got all kinds of toys yeah, and Yeah, art of himself stuff. dressed like superheroes. Ah, uh, no, which is awesome. Oh, I'm And Gogo, <laughs> Gogo's literally like, oh my god. <laughs> like, what is this? And he's like, but he knows everything about superheroes. They're asking him stuff and he's like, you guys, I know what this is. This is your classic revenge villain. <laughs> and he like puts him on the wall, right? And he's yeah. like, oh, he's Honestly, he was right. So, <laughs> and this is our origin story. Yes. <laughs> we gotta oh. get like, I know. When they talk about what they're going to do, he's like, so it's the origin story. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. literally ridiculous. It's I very cool. Uh, so they figure out, basically they think it's Alistair Craig at this point. Um, yes. So is this the point where they go to... Not or, like well, they, they, they get They, get they practice. This yes. is like, they got to take time. So... Uh, that Fall Out Boy song comes on, it's like, dun, 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 you know that song. <laughs> <laughs> For the funny part about that, <laughs> what? there's actually a really funny part about that, is that that's how Fall Out Boy songs start. <laughs> yeah, I did. It's kind of nothing like that one. Right. That's exactly how they start. So that was actually pretty accurate. You hit three notes, like, you know that song. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it sounds. I don't know the words, but. Um, you know what? That was my childhood right there. I was doing a lot of all out. Yeah, me too. It was a ridiculous amount. I'm assuming you did not. I did not. No, I remember when I told Andre that that's why I was like obsessed with as a teenager and went to a ton of their concerts. He was like, who? And I was like, yeah, well, I, I know who they are. No, I did. I like this voice. <laughs> so we, we we discussed the, the the team's powers a little bit already, but but it is cool watching this whole montage where they're learning oh, they're to use everything. Pretty, yeah, it's freaking heroes creating all insane. of the suits so for he them. So he takes each of their experiments, basically that they've been working on, and turns it into their own superpowers. Yeah. Which is insane, and their outfits are so so cool. Like I love their outfits. Yeah. And then they well, just I love how practice. They use Fred's house is like headquarters. Yes. Because well, it's like between like heroes. Um, Garage, garage, yeah. And then, like, Fred's house, and they're using his, like, backyard, and, like, super, really fancy yes. backyard. Like, I'm looking at Wasabi's right now, it's, like, so cool. Yeah, Wasabi's got, uh, he's got a, a green laser visor. Laser arms. A, a la- yeah, laser blade. That arms. reminds me of Halo, I won't lie to you. It, it, does, it, does, it does look a little Master chief yeah. Uh, just, you know, sans helmet. And then he's also got, you know, uh, yoga pants on or whatever. Uh, <laughs> that would be really yeah. nice for Master Chief. Comfy. I think he needs some yoga pants. And they also all have, like, headphone gear so that they can communicate, communicate with, each with each other. Which is which is cool. Honey uh, Lemon looks bomb. Doesn't she look so cool? I like her power purse because, first of all, it's, like, it's like cute and very her style. Yes. Right? It's got a big heart on the side that has, like, digital stuff all over it. And she's it. not wearing her glasses. So I wonder if that, like, visor that goes over oh, her maybe is, he like, put, glasses. Oh, maybe he put a prescription hey, in there. I want that. That's, That's cool. cool. Yeah. That's really cool. Um, but it also has, like, all of the, the power balls or whatever, like, on the strap. Yeah. Of she's, the like, a more modern-day Hawkeye, except instead of arrows, she has chemistry balls. <laughs> Which is cool. And then Gogo. Yeah, Gogo has definitely the best outfit. She's, oh, like, no, she's like, like all in racing yellow, and the, the, the circular wheels on her on her feet. Um, Act like ice. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like yeah she just gets to, to and then the ones slide. on her arms she can throw. Yeah, which is awesome. I think can she throw the the leg ones too? I don't think so. Right? Uh, no, she's taking them off. Oh, okay. Yeah, because yeah, they're all just attached by like head 
magnets. Yeah. Yeah, she has four that she can through. Two on her arms, two on her legs, but her feet are the fast thingies. Right. Also. But but she could probably also roll on her like her arms or stuff like that if, yeah. if, if she that wanted to. That would be cool if she had like rolled on her arms like in a handstand yeah. or something. Or even like just like went down a San Francisco hill on all fours or whatever. That would have been she probably could if she wanted she to. Yeah. And then Fred's <laughs> just a fire breathing. <laughs> Fred, which is awesome because like they just took his costume. Yeah, and hero sees yeah. his mascot costumes like I can do something this <laughs> let's add fire and an extra eye because <laughs> why not it's hilarious i never even realized there was three eyes i just thought there was one big one no it's three. right yeah he's got three eyes i thought it was just like crazy. cyclops and it, i think i only saw the top one the top eye yeah and then he's got the two bottom eyes dude mm -hmm. he is so funny i wonder <laughs> this is like mascot technology but i wonder where he's looking out of because you it's know for most cool. mascots remember you look, you look through like the mouth or whatever i think he's like sitting in there just like but he's got his arms attached and stuff like that, so he has to look out of oh, yeah, one of these. Oh yeah, he's at the end on the stretch, and he's like, oh yeah, this is a costume. And he yeah. just like pulls his He's, out, he's out looking out of the eyes or the mouth, but the mouth breathes fire, so when he's breathing fire out of the yeah. mouth, it's hard to see. I, I don't know, it's really cool. Maybe a little more. I think, what if his head is at the top? Uh, like, maybe, yeah, you know, it's not that tall of a suit. No, it could be he look, looking out of the top eye. Because he's pretty, like, normal size. Yeah. Like, he's not, like, super, yeah, he's not, he's not Godzilla. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> huh. Fredzilla. Who knows? Anyways, they train up, and then Hero teaches Baymax how to fly, and they have this whole flying scene through San Francisco, which well, is so cool. The funniest part, though, if you think about it, is Hero doesn't get a power. Right, yeah. No, Hero Baymax has Baymax. Is, yeah, so Hero just gets, like, a cool suit. Yeah, like, he just armor. outfits himself with some, some armor, basically. He's just smart. And then, he t and then this is my thing, but I think he pretty much turns Baymax into Iron Man. Yes. Yeah, he, just, like, like, he has, like, Foot rests on it that he can like mount Baymax yeah. basically. Yeah. Well, and did you, did you see the way he flew? Yeah. He did the Tinkerbell original Iron Man fly. Mm -hmm. Right, where, where his so hands go out. His hands go down uh -huh. and, he, and, he, and he goes up. And then he can like disconnect his arm. Yeah. And I was like, okay. Rocket Iron fist. Man, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Baymax is designed. In this in this power armor, the, the second armor, it's it's so awesome. Like he he goes from this from chubby nurse to like full on superhero, and he looks Scary. all swole and and well, powerful. Not scary, but like intimidating. Yeah. If you didn't, if you didn't know him. For sure. Yeah. And he's all makes, red. Even the way the the helmet, it makes him look like he has like, like mad or something. Yeah, yeah it gives him like angry eyebrows, basically. Even though it's just covering his cute little circle, like his little line in the middle. Yes. <laughs> oh. And then they, yeah they. Basically fly through San Francisco, which is one of the coolest scenes oh, too. Yeah, for He's sure. like falling off of the Golden Gate Bridge into the water. I'm like, oh jeez. Yeah. And they're on those giant balloons. Blimps. Yeah. And stuff. Well, and that's what I wrote here. I mean, we talked about like the backgrounds and stuff, but in this scene when they go through, like the sunset, the fog, the cityscape, the bridge, the bridge, it's just unreal. Like it literally looks like you're you're watching yeah. live action. Yeah. And especially really the way good. it looks in San Francisco. I mean, they. They nailed it. They nailed it. Mm -hmm. If you've ever been to San Francisco on a Friday morning, which is many mornings, <laughs> it, it looks exactly like that. Yeah. It's just, it was gorgeous. And then they have a yeah. moment on the balloon where Baymax is like, you can say you're satisfied with your care because like his, he has adrenaline in him, so his right. heart is much happier than he was when he first working. Met. And he's like, what? No, why <laughs> would you do that? Yeah. He wants him to be like his friend now, right? So Baymax oh, is basically oh, like, I know. Oh. Baymax is like, okay. And then they... They go on their first mission to go and try and find out what happened. Yeah, and I think I think honestly that conversation, you know, Baymax is doing his best to to make Hero happy because Hero was sad that he lost to Dashi. And, he just thinks he's giving him treatment. And Hero this entire time has been like focused on making Baymax yeah, better yeah. so that they can. Uh, get justice for Tadashi, but at this point, when he's saying like, "Oh, you're you're happy now, so you're good to go," I think that reinvigorates Hero's like, "Oh no, yeah. I I can't just let it be this. I have to avenge my brother." Exactly, and that that sets him on like a revenge path, almost almost as much as um, mm -hmm. Callahan is for. Well, Frank. and here's the deal too, because this is exactly what I wrote, and I agree with you. <laughs> Coughing. <laughs> Sorry, I like off right into my mind. Okay, here's the deal. The one thing that they that he outfitted <clears throat> Cutie Face with, Baymax. Baymax, that we forgot to mention is the enhanced scanner. Because what he was saying yeah. was they were saying like we'll never figure out who this is, or we'll never figure out excuse me, not Where? who it is. Where Alistair Cray or mm -hmm. whoever it is. And Baymax was like, 
I know it's blood type. <laughs> Which right, because yeah. he scans everyone that he's around to make sure they're okay. So, Which is very helpful. Which is helpful, but here's where my ethical dilemma comes in. Mm-hmm. Hero outfits him with the enhanced scanner. So part of this whole flight is them going to the top of this balloon. They're hanging out. Yeah. And at the top, he does the, the yeah, scanning scan scan and every, scans of everyone. I had asked to be scanned. I did not ask to be scanned. So he, my ethical problem with this is that if y'all have ever seen, what is it? Batman, Dark Knight. Oh, yes. Oh, Dark Knight. Yeah. It's almost the exact same idea yes. where Batman um, creates this network of cell yes. phones that can scan the entire city. He basically just uses audio and visual from every cell phone in the city to create an entire... He, yeah. he just has eyes everywhere. He has triangulation on the entire That's city. That's creepy. And I ain't asked to be spied upon Batman. I did not. And so it's funny never about that, that whole ethical like debate he has with um, Fox. What is it? Fox. Yes. Um, you know, our favorite old guy. Um, <laughs> They have that conversation about how that is, it's not cool. It's like a complete invasion of privacy. And I was thinking about that. I think that it almost, I don't, I don't sound weird, but like it almost made Hero more revengey mm-hmm. because now he realized he has the power to, to get whatever he needs yeah. at this point. And so it set him, like you said, on that path to like, I'm going to get him no matter what yes, because exactly. we can and I will do whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. So he's using yes. that science mind for things that we just, like, we stepped over the line. Exactly. You yes. know? So they scan, they find him in the nanobot. They, he's like on an island. He's on an island. Mm-hmm. And and he's like, they're not Yeah. Like, <laughs> Manhattan, science laboratory. Um, laboratory. laboratory. <laughs> <laughs> well, they are. <laughs> That was good. That was really good. My goodness. Laboratory, let me say it. I don't know. That was fantastic. I just was not expecting that. (laughs) Anyway, so they're there, and they they have before seen this symbol of like a. um, I think it's like a bird. Like a bird. Always was like, is that like the Hunger Games? It does look like (laughs) Hunger Games. So they see that same symbol there, and they're like, okay, we're in the right place, right? But they don't know what's going on. They're like, what happened here? Like. We don't know, but um, they go in. They see a destroyed portal. Just a, they don't know it's a portal though. They just right. see a destroyed thing, and then um, they access some files. No, they don't oh. yet. They he just comes and they fight, and they are not very good at it. They don't they don't they see all those files and stuff yet. They just know that's like after. Okay. Mm-hmm, that's all after. It's after. So they fight him, but they're not doing very good. Right. Like they're not working, they're not working together as a, as a team. It's like their first time being out and about. But um, literally, they're so silly. Yeah, yes. they're not. They're not doing good. Honey, looking like throws one of her little balls, and she like jumps back. <laughs> the fact that Wasabi didn't cut off his own legs is amazing. Yes. Honestly, <laughs> so they basically all trap themselves, but eventually, Hero is able to get the mask off. Mm-hmm. So they see who it is. That it's Professor Callahan. And Hero in that moment is basically like even more amped up because you betrayed my brother. Right. You're supposed to protect us, and he's basically like Baymax attack. Like let's kill him. Like they were, right. he was gonna kill him. So and then he that's takes when... the Tadashi AI out of Baymax and just leaves in the martial I, arts. Yes, fight. and uh, they're all like no, no. And even I think Hero is like this is what Tadashi would want. Like he like says something like that, but he, Baymax. Oh, uh, yeah, Baymax, but he doesn't have any power over that, right? So he, like, uh, Baymax's eyes, like, turn red. Like, he gets, like, crazy, right? So he's fighting and them. And he literally turns into, like, like, destructo. Evil Baymax is a scary. Yeah. Well, scary. He'd be killing them. Yeah. But luckily, <laughs> yeah. the other four um, were able to get that chick back in and try to calm Hero oh, down. Yeah. So, uh, unfortunately, he escaped with his mask. Um, Callahan. Callahan, but so they know it's Callahan now, so he's even more amped up, right? And I think he just tries to go back out there with Baymax, but B- Baymax like locked his chip thing. Chip so pool. usually he can open and close it to put the the fighting chip back in. So he wants to take out the healthcare chip again, and Baymax is like, no, like we're not taking it out. So I thought that was cool that he like had the power to do that. They take him home. Well, hold on. There's a couple different things oh. that happen. I think that are just like poignant. Mm-hmm. First, the, the gang. Mm-hmm. 
the big heroes. Five, <laughs> four without uh -huh. two, are like, oh, heck no. Like, no, they're like right. very upset. They're like, we didn't we, come here didn't to sign murder up for this. this dude. No, no, we came over here to just find out what happened. Mm -hmm. And so, again, that whole kind of ethical like thing pops up that, like, we're going to do this the right way with, like, cops. Yeah. Like, we're not going to freaking attack kill them. Kill yeah. Even though they realize now that the professor is hell bent on getting whatever. Yeah. Um, Which they don't really know what's going on yet. No, so. they're, they're really unsure, but Hero gets mad and, leaves. and literally leaves, leaves them, them on the island. island. They flew over there with Baymax, no? <laughs> yeah, but he flew away on Baymax. I know! He was like, oh, dang, we just left him. Um, and while... Maybe we shouldn't let the 13-year-old lead the team. Uh, Maybe we shouldn't do that. Fred, <laughs> luckily, <laughs> luckily, Baymax healthcare professional side comes in with a uh, Tadashi is here again and shows him the video, you know, and that really did help finally calm him down. And I mean, he's 13 I think I and he's the first time I watched this Oh, that scene. scene? Yeah. yeah, I'm blazing over when it. When Tadashi's like intense. building Baymax and testing him out and he's working um, so incredibly it hard so on it. Funny. And yes. he's just like learning <laughs> a lot of lives. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, it's freaking sad. Yeah. Um, and so, you know you get the heart, you get the heart of Tadashi. I mean, you could already tell he was a helper. You could already, right. already tell that he was smart and he was using his smarts for good. But in the video that Baymax is, is repeating back to Hero, you see that it's not so much that he just wants to help people. It's that he wants to help people but also help his brother mm -hmm. to inspire him, yeah. to make him proud, to show him that there is more to life. And I think that that's – if he hadn't seen this video – Poor hero would end up in prison. Oh yeah, like, he would have been like a villain hero for sure. And he he has that change of heart because he sees what his brother was was trying to do for him and do for others. Mm -hmm. And it made his sacrifice of living in this building so much more more powerful. Powerful, worth it, you know. Um, I agree, definitely. And that's where the poor the poor cutie faces. So well, luck, luckily, you know, uh, Fred, Fred's got family. He called so him a chopper. Oh, a chopper, yes. <laughs> well, while they were on this island, they were able to hack into the files, so yep. they kind of used their smarts, and they found footage of basically what happened there, which, first of all, don't leave that on an abandoned island, idiots. Oh, Come yeah, on. Yeah. Um, so, Alistair Cray and Professor Callahan created a portal that basically can go through space. So in one side, out the other. So you can go in this portal that we've created and wherever we put the other portal, you can come out the other side. Right. So I don't know if it was like the US government or some tech company or something like that. It had to have been private, I'm assuming. Yes. It almost seemed like the government. I don't know. I think they were some, trying to sell it. Yeah. They were trying to sell it to this company, right? So Alistair Cray shows them how to do it and then they're going to put a human through it, like in a, spaceship type of thing, right? Like a pod. Like yeah. a pod, yes, but unfortunately they say, like, hey, we're getting some bad readings, but Mr. Cray makes the decision not just to go ahead and go forth with the presentation. So he does that. The girl that went in, stuff, everything starts basically sucking in on itself and deconstructing, and that's when you see Professor Hallett Callahan run in and yell at Cray, saying, like, that was my daughter, you knew it was disabled, so then we really get that backstory of Oh crap, so Callahan lost his daughter into his own experiments thing, and that's why he hates Cray so much because Cray made the executive decision to go forward with it when it was unstable. Basically, Cray which just added daughter. like a whole another life. level to this where I was like, what? That's crazy? Yeah. Okay. It's, it, yeah, that is. I'd be mad at Cray too. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a very cool backstory. I, uh, I know, it's very yeah. sad yeah. to think about Callahan that way, so that's why he says he had this school because he's been trying to develop get something, develop but... something and take all these smart kids or young adults in so that they can develop some kind of tech that he can eventually just use to go get his daughter back. Well, I don't know if they're. We don't really get the. Um, the solid answer if he wants to try to get his daughter back because I think he thinks she's dead. Yeah, I think that's what he's, he's, he is. Oh no, he's trying to rebuild it to send to like pray in there. To so like, like yeah, right. to like ruin the like here's your own medicine. Oh that's what he's doing. He's trying to destroy his like whole destroy new his whole empire. center he built. Because I think he, he's resigned his, the, himself to the fact that his daughter's exactly. that's true, you're right. You're that's right. Crazy fault. I'm just saying that because we know she's alive in the end. Right. But you're right. So once they find out all this out, they're like, oh my gosh, so he's going after Cray. Oh, and lo and behold, he's opening his new 
school or center whatever or... today. So that's where he is, right? And yes, he's there. Uh, the portal is there, and he's sucking like his entire building into this portal, yeah, which is absolutely terrifying again because the there's just like so much electricity going on around everywhere. Where I was like, oh my gosh, this is terrifying. Well, and talk about like, and you could stuff the whole freaking thing about if it kept going, you couldn't turn off and just keep sucking the whole ground in, like everything. I don't know, with the it just seems a little intense. It's a real <laughs> superhero type movie, yeah. like, yeah, and it, it again reminds me of like. Actually, it reminds me of Days of Future Past a lot. Like at the end of the movie, when they're when they're raising the whole um, NFL, it's like NFL it's stadium. like a baseball stadium. Or yeah. baseball stadium. Oh, see, I was thinking, thinking, and just everything is like crumbling, and the whole cityscape is just. I was thinking of uh, I don't know which Avenger movie it is. I think it's Winter Soldier, where the town. Oh, that's Age of Ultron. Age yeah, of we're, Ultron. We're oh, like floating yeah. up. Just the entire Sokovia. Thank you. Oh my God, it's Sokovia. Yeah. That's like kind of what it reminded me of a little bit too. And it's also kind of like the Avengers, where there's like a portal in the sky yep. and everything is uh, raining down out of it this time. And, uh, and so, things. luckily, the the six are back together at this point, and they understand and they have the bigger picture of this. Like we need to go stop this. They're I think they want to try to talk down Callahan yeah. more than anything. And here because now they know the truth. Right. Yeah. So they they want to try to talk mm. it down. But they're in way over their heads again. They're trying to fight, and once again, they're not doing so well. But this is really where Hero comes in. Like, yes, he created all this tech, and he doesn't have any superpowers, but he can kind of connect them all through Baymax. Right. And he's telling them, like, like think in a different box. way, because yeah. I think that's what his brother always yeah. told him, you know? <clears throat> so he's trying to do that, and then they, they do. It's even funny. And then once again, that Fallout Boy song comes on. <laughs> Fallout Boy's back. And they they that finally have really like the cool fight scene because then they start using their tech for real yeah. and I'm like oh snap here we go yeah all the action it's scenes insane. Are really yeah the action scenes are like a live action in a superhero movie like it's intense what I think it's really cool because the best fighting that they do is not fighting right you know like when they're using their their tech to like get out of situations and things. It's not so much that they're fighting him, it's that they're, they're putting up blockers. Yeah, like they play defense, defense, not offense. And, and working together as a team, finally. <laughs> yes. yes. So, oh gosh, you go forward with it, dude. So much happens. Um. Okay, so uh, let's see. Uh, at, at one point, I believe they... Are, are they destroying the microbots, or are they... Um, oh, they destroy them. Yes, they're so, destroying them, and they're getting them to go up into the portal, so he so loses really control. So really, they're just like... They're just making them sure that they get separated, separated. Mm -hmm. from each other because they're magnetic, yes. right? So if you cut a couple off, then they'll get sucked up into, into the, the thing. portal. Yes. So and they're just hacking away. They're hacking away at the microbots, and they do that enough so that uh, Callahan begins, begins to lose support of the portal and of uh, everything oh, the microbots. He doesn't have anything. Everything that he's attacking. Everything he's attacking Therefore, yeah. they were able to take his mask off and crush it that time. So right. none of the microbots were. But then as soon as that happens, because he was thinking about keeping that portal open, the portal fell. Yes. And the portal falls out of the ground, and now they're, everyone's like, oh my god, we need to get the heck out of here because this portal's going to like... It's going to explode. Gonna explode. Because it's like, yeah, it's basically going to explode, right? Um, however, Baymax in that moment, of course, there comes his healthcare professional side, and he's like, I detect life. Like, right, yeah, he's scanned he inside the, the portal. near the portal. And so, and he's able to scan and identify, and so then they figure out it's the daughter. No. Right? Well, well they assume it's the daughter. Well, they assume yeah. it's the daughter, yes. Which so, is crazy because she's been this in the moment. She said, she said she's been in stasis or something. Yeah. Right, right. yeah. This, this moment with them deciding, like, what they're going to do is the exact same moment that Tadashi had going into mm -hmm. the, the party building, building to get Callum out. I have to help. You know, and Hero just looks at Baymax and is like, all right, let's go. And everyone else is like, no. <laughs> Too late, though, because they were already in. They go into the portal, which is insane. Like, literally insane. It's, it's like so this purple, in there. crazy thing. <laughs> Some alternate reality. We're like in a flashpoint universe. I don't know. Some crazy going on. It's like a negative zone. Um, they find her, though. But unfortunately, there's just not that much power to get left in Baymax through all the fighting to get back. So right. he does use his power to like get them back to the portal, but then he runs out, right? Or something hits him and he, he just uh yeah, I think I think they're trying to fly the pod out of out of the portal and they run into some debris and kind of destroys 
Yeah, suit. I thought it was a battery issue too, but it's, it doesn't really lose battery. It's yeah. just his suit gets just broken yeah. when he hits that. So he literally had zero thrusters. So he can't he can't fly anymore. He's basically stuck. And he basically just has to push uh, Hero and 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 the daughter out of out of the portal. Which is so sad because he doesn't want to lose his friend. Right. Yes. So he uses his little Iron Man fist. Yes. Yeah, he's gonna use his little Iron Man fist. Yeah, he's gonna use his little Iron Man fist. Like himself. For, for Hero and uh, I mean, he's he's basically, kind of a big long moment. But it was yeah, also sad because he's like, it's okay. Like, he said the same thing about Tadashi, it's here. He's mm-hmm. like, I'm here. And he like points at his heart. I'm like, stab it, Baymax. You stab it, you little squishy ball. <laughs> he's so <laughs> cute. So they come back without Baymax, and everybody's sad, but also happy that the daughter's alive. Yes. But then Callahan got arrested, so I don't even think he's going to see his daughter really anyway. Nah, 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 we're going to prison. Yeah, yeah he is. We're going to prison. Um, but it's okay because um, he goes to the school finally. Wow, he's finally in school, right? right yes. So he goes to the school, mm-hmm. and he takes Baymax's arm and like puts it on top of the shelf as like decoration, yeah, like I guess so. for inspiration that he can look at. <laughs> he can look at it and be inspired, you know what I mean? But the he does the blah 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 blah. I didn't even talk about that. The handshake. We didn't even do that. Blah 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 blah. blah, blah. <laughs> so he does. That and he only one. makes that sound because uh, Hero goes like <laughs> when his like fist explodes. And he can't do that, so he's like blah blah blah. It's a blah, blah, blah. fist bump. You can't do that. Blah blah blah. Blah blah blah. So funny. Um, but when he does that, the hand opens a little bit, and then. Baymax was really smart and put his healthcare professional chip in there. Yeah, Such a smart his, boy. Put his whole Good boy. Good boy, Baymax. Into his hand. Before, his hand before he shot it off. Yeah. So then he, uh, Hero immediately just makes it on his body. He's like, whoa. New so Baymax. I'm sure he had the plan somewhere, you know, yeah. like he was able to do that. And I, I thought it was cool that Baymax still remembered everything because I was thinking like, oh, it would be like a new version. Like he's not, but the chip's the same. Sure, so. Yeah. New body, but it's same the same brain. Baymax, you know. So he's like, "Hello, hero." And he's like, "Oh, I'll never be done by the my care Baymax." <laughs> no. <laughs> At that point, he ain't a healthcare professional. He's his friend now. He's yes. stuck. He's big. And then finally, literally took me forever to figure. I guess took me till the end of the movie to realize that they were big Hero Six. Took me a long time to figure that out because I was like, "Why is this movie called Big Hero Six? It didn't take you guys that long? Okay. It took me a while. I did. Is there six of them? Yeah, I didn't even know. Yeah. Uh... They're big heroes? Yeah. Or I said big hero, though. Is it just hero six? Big hero. I don't know. Big hero six sounds better than six heroes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're pretty big. <laughs> Such a good movie. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, and then, do we get the follow up West song again? I don't know. I'm just saying for the sure, credits. I'm sure it's in the credits. Twice. I think they play it a couple times. And then there's an after credit scene. Did you yes. see it? Oh, yes. MG with Fred. So Fred is like and looking at a painting of his father. Off. First off, this is how I know I watched it in theaters. Mm. Because Luis and I, no, I know this. Yes. This came out in 2014. We had just gotten married. No. Right before you got married? No, no, no. We got married in January 2014. Oh, so yes, okay. we had just gotten married. And it was hilarious because when they first walk through um, Fred's house in the original scene, Luis was like, uh, they showed a portrait of their family, and I was like, that family? <laughs> and I'm like, what? Oh, I didn't I, notice it in the first picture. I, well, I think yes. it was just that I was looking more at Fred's mm-hmm. face than I was looking at, at the, the parents. People. I, I, why would they look at the parents? Luis was like, oh, Stanley. And I'm like, no, it wasn't. Shut up. He's like, oh, Stanley. <laughs> and then at the end, I was like, he, he was the one who was like, we have to stay. And I'm like, there's not going to be an after credit scene. He's like, dude, this is like Marvel. Do you need an after credit scene? Mm-hmm. So we sat and nobody else stayed. We were the only ones really? in the full theater. I remember this. I never, st- I never saw it until this watching. Dude, we sat there and I and Luis was like, ah, it's yeah, so man. awesome. I didn't know there was one until this watching. And even like I was ready for Andre to turn off the movie. I was like, what are we doing? Did you know there was an after credit? I believe scene? so. I believe I, I'd seen it before. Fred stands at the, the portrait of him and his father and his mother, and he's, like, saying, like, oh, man, I wish my dad was here. I wish I knew my dad better. And then he, like, sees, like, a latch or something like that, and the portrait, like, opens a secret door, and you find out that his dad was a superhero. Yeah, but it's the funniest superhero, <laughs> like, because there's underwear all over the wall, underwear, <laughs> and then his dad walks in, which is Stanley, and they, like, start quoting the same, I'm assuming, like, comic book. I don't, like I don't remember words what they're or saying, something actually. together, and he's like, Dad? And he's like, so 
<laughs> and then they just like embrace, and I'm like, so you've never met your father? It's insane. Well, he's met him before, but he didn't know he was a superhero. He didn't know he was a superhero. Or that he was around. They watched him on a pirate island or whatever. <laughs> Freaking hilarious. Well, that's what he always thought his parents were on the island, but now they were out fighting. Around. Right, yeah. yeah. I know, I want to know who his mom is now. Very cool. Yeah. It reminded me of Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. Like, the outfits look Yes, like a very old school But they, like, state something like underwear. Something, uh, I don't know. They were, like, quoting oh! something. I wear my underwear front. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it out. Right side backwards. Right? Yes, that's a fair. Yeah, because he always before. says that, but I'm so Because he doesn't have to do laundry. <laughs> oh. Freaking ridiculous. That's, so, that's one of the one of the better uh, Stanley camps. Oh, right, let's let's talk. I don't know. About, I don't know. Oh, no, so funny. Stanley recipes. Yes, he was a fantastic captain. Oh, so good. <laughs> usually, I'm like, he wasn't like a, a Marvel too. thing, you know what I mean? So it was so funny to have. Him well, that's the movie. thing is that is this property is owned by Marvel, and they oh. and Disney, Walt well, Disney Studios teamed up with Marvel Studios to, to make this it? movie. Yes. Oh, well, there you go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is which is cool and uh, unprecedented. Interesting. I Let's, just, I just love, I love, love, love that he and talked. And his cartoon form. Yes. Oh, and he was a good cartoon. Like, yeah. it was right, yeah, it so looked well just it like him. Stanley. Why <laughs> is he Stanley? He's a realist. Yes. Oh, so funny. I'm Great. assuming this has an amazing rating. On Rotten Tomatoes, this film has 89%. Yeah, percent. Wonderful. Yes. Great. Wonderful. Certified. Especially for a Disney fresh. one. Yeah. That's not princess. Right, That's exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is definitely people yeah, like superhero stuff. Aimed, aimed at the at the boys for sure. I, but, I need you know, this I need this to get even more popular because come on. I need I need Baymax back in the park. I need that another meet and greet. Yeah, I, I love this team because like it's it's a diverse team. There's a couple girls, they're they're all uh different they're races. All very I, I believe, different personalities. You know? And they've all, they've got a, a wide gamut of, of of a power set and they're just they're just cool together. So I want I want a, I want a direct they, sequel. They, it's almost like they're better. <laughs> hanging out than they are at fighting. Yes. But they're just smart enough to get out of stitches. Exactly. You know? Mm -hmm. Hold on, let me talk. Um Oh, Easter egg. Easter egg. Yes. Oh shoot. It's a number one there. Easter egg movie, right? With with Disney movies. Okay. Because you know Disney doesn't do it as much. Okay. I'm just gonna run through them like do it. fast yeah. enough. So I was we said earlier that Hero's Bob looks like Mickey. So that's an option for a for an Easter egg. Sure. Ralph from Wreck It Ralph mm -hmm. is on top of Hero's computer. Oh. He's hanging out like on the monitor. And FYI, when we found this one, we didn't see oh. it on. I mean, we ended up finding it later, mm -hmm. but he literally is like hanging out in like a Wreck It pose on top of his <laughs> computer. I'll have you know that we just met. Um, Oh my god. We just met Wreck It Ralph in the parks on our honeymoon. Oh yeah. And I think that's another one of those meet and greets that's only gonna be around for a little while. Yeah. So if you are in the area or going to Disneyland, make sure you go see Ralph and Vanilla. Oh, I love it. Um Girl, don't miss miss him like how oh, I miss Baymax. No. Okay, this one we caught in the movie as well. Um when you're in the police station, Hans from Frozen is behind the policeman's head. So like the whole time he's talking at you like front on, mm -hmm. you can't see the wanted posters. Hans is like on the posters. Yes, but then when he turns away to like type on the computer, then you can see you can see a wanted poster posters. with Hans's face. Who is this Hans? So <laughs> funny, okay? And it's very clear. And this movie came out the year before Frozen, right? Yes, it did. Yeah, yes. so well. And do that sometimes. Here I'll show you guys the picture. It's it's yeah. Hans. <laughs> um, do that like pre Easter egg. And it's funny too because. Similarly, um, the Big Hero 6 filmmakers are on um, a wanted poster as oh. well next to it. So, like, in their likeness, which is really funny. <laughs> um, it would be more funny if Clean Rider was on there. Too. That's what I said. Right, was yeah. like, well, and one of the guys kind of looks like Linda movies were like, on the screen. Just cricket nose. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, the cat. Uh, Harry Baby. Harry Baby. Harry Baby. Cat's name is Mochi, which is really funny. So cute. Um, in one of Disney Animal Portraits on the wall, the cat is dressed up as Stitch. Like it's in a what? Stitch, yeah, like outfit. Stitch outfit. Yes, it's cute. like like a cat body suit. That's adorable. Very funny. Um, Stanley, obviously Fred's dad. Yes. Um, and then inside of the garage, um, the hero works in Eve's head. Like the top of her head is oh. inside of um, just like a robot. Heart. Heart. He made it. Yes. He made it. Which is actually pretty cool, right? Um in Frozen Fever, which is a frozen short, 
Um, we see a mini, what do they call those? The oh, little, little snowball Little things. snowballs that are like part of, um, um, yeah, that, 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 that oh, was the right, one that right, was, okay. Yeah, I know. Yes, there's one that has a little Baymax face on it. So it's like a little um, Baymax. Little person. Baymax uh, snowman. Yes, which I think is absolutely yeah. precious. Um, similarly, they say that in the scene where they're testing out all their gear, there is a, um, what do you call that, a statue? Yeah, so here. Baymax uses rocket fist to destroy a statue, and the statue is Hans. That's hilarious. <laughs> it's just like Hans, but it's a very fast... Um, right. I find all yeah. these Frozen things even more hilarious because, spoiler alert, we're doing Frozen as our next movie, and we watched it, and it's so funny. Right? <laughs> okay, you want to know this one? This one's super cool. So in Avengers Age of Ultron, there is a big Hero 6... Hmm. Easter egg? What? What is it? So there's a point where um, Mr. Tony Stark is doing some rewrites of tech, and he right. has different... Um, yes. He doesn't have Jarvis anymore, so he has to get a new AI for his suit. Exactly. So he is creating his AI chip, and his chips, as we know, are always named by the movie on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Tuesday. Sure. Right. And one of the chips in the movie is hmm. called Tadashi. Oh, that's so cool! So do you see it right on the bottom? Look. Oh, wow. So one of his is called Tadashi, and it's it's a similar chip to what Tadashi has. Right, it's it looks cool. like the Tadashi um, chip. We talked about this one in the Bolt episode, which, again, I don't really get why it's in here, but what else? <laughs> um, behind the police desk, there's a picture of Bolt and the lady from the pound. The security it's, guard at the pound. <laughs> I don't know. So weird. I don't know why. I don't know. Because they felt like it. Yes, exactly. There's another um, Stitch reference um, inside of Fred's house. When you're going around looking at the memorabilia, there's like a folded shirt with a stitch on it. Oh, well, oh I saw that one. I don't know why. Um, That's super nerd. And also in that same room, there is a outfitted um, oh, it's, armor. Yeah, it's like one of the one of the the the, the mech dudes from um, the cyborg video game. Yes, the game, in, in Wreck It Ralph. Yes, it's supposed to look mm, like. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God, why am I losing it? It's supposed to look like uh, Halo. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so his cyborg outfit is there. Um, lastly... Spartan. Yes, Spartan. Thank you. Lastly, there is an Oswald on one of the posters on the ceiling mm-hmm. of Hero Heroes and Tadashi's um, room. room. We already talked about the, the coconut. The coconut. Yeah. The oh, yes. <laughs> and... Um, and yeah, there's an A113 on one of the, um, what do you call it? On one of his computers. On one of his computer screens. In the code. So they really just put together as many cool things as they could. Did you see the hidden Mickey? No. So, um, right as Hero is about to get on Baymax for the first time to, to fly him, on his, when he's putting his feet on, like, the holders, you can see on Hero's shoe, there's a tiny little itty bitty hidden Mickey. On like the left hand side. Of the That's right. There's also references to Cybugs, Chicken Little, and Wreck It Ralph on po- uh, what do you call those? Like poster boards or mm-hmm. billboard signs. Um, they're just very, very small. Like if you can get a good enough picture and zoom it in, you can then see you can it, see. but it's really hard to just see from afar. Right, like, just watching the movie. Mm-hmm. But I think it's fantastic that they were able to throw all of those things in because if you're not looking for them, you won't see them. But when you are looking, you're like, oh my god, stop it. Mm-hmm. You can see all gotcha. the children. Wow. Cool. Good stuff, Big Hero Six. Did it make a lot of money? It did make a lot of money. Uh, this movie had a budget of $165 million, uh, which is pretty, Jeez. pretty expensive. Um, but <laughs> it ended up making, um, just domestically, $222 million. And then if you expand that out uh, with foreign money, it made a total of $657 yeah, million. That makes sense. That makes sense. Over half a bill, baby. I'm assuming this movie was extremely popular overseas as well. Yeah, yeah. You uh, when you have a movie that's set or even featuring in dual cities, yeah, yeah. featuring aspects of another country, it, it normally does very well overseas, which is mm-hmm. which is nice, and which is why if you notice in some movies where they have like a big set piece set in like China or Japan or India or something like that, that's 
probably the main reason why that's in the movie is, is to so that it plays hmm. well overseas. Interesting. I don't mind it because I love the culture. Now. Yeah, and yeah. San Francisco it's so okay, rich it was so, and so cool. interesting that it's I'm about it. Mm-hmm. And I, and we didn't even talk about like like the the more um, distinguishable cultural aspects. Really, all we talked about was architecture. We right. could go on for days, but a lot of the um, more kind of intimate cultural things we're seeing throughout the movie as mm-hmm. well. We could go on for that for days. Yeah. But, mm-hmm. My voice is going out, so I think you can. <laughs> and this movie, you know, it does have like, like it's not an anime, for no. sure, because it's, it's definitely that Disney CGI 3D animation. But it, 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 it with a very round character. Yes, yeah, a very round character. So it definitely has some like anime influences yes. through, throughout it, which like which, their hair. Which I like yes, their mm-hmm. hair is very anime. Yeah, yeah, me likey. All right, let's rate this puppy. I'm gonna give it. Let me go first. Oh. Nine point five. <laughs> Boom. Well, I was gonna say the same. That's Stolen. Five. I think it, it would be higher if there was like a superhero song. You know? Exactly. I mean, mm-hmm. we did get present. Present. <laughs> I'm adapting. The only problem with this is that the orchestration or or the score, excuse me, like when they're flying is beautiful. But if I heard it again, I would not. Wouldn't say necessarily that recognize it as mm-hmm. superhero. No, I don't hate anything about this movie besides yeah. you could have superhero song. Yeah, or we could have had like two more. Fall Out Boy songs. Because I don't, I'm sure. not saying it's second in the same one. Not that I mind. Immortals, that's what the Fall Out Boy Yes. Immortals, thank you. Now I got it. That's what I was like. <laughs> I, thought, I, I thought one of their other songs was was in this movie. I think, well, I'm looking at the soundtrack right now. That's the only one that, yeah, that has Fall Out Boy as, as the artist. The rest of the um, score was composed by Henry Jackman. Good job. Well, I remember watching it and liking it. I, excuse me, stupid. I remember. Mm-hmm. Hearing it and thinking this is really yeah, I like, well I like done. The score. But again, if you play it for me right now, I might not be like, oh yeah, I totally right, know that's right. She did catch him there for Winter Soldier. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right there. It's it. Yeah. 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 There we go. Your turn. Yeah. Go. Um, I think I'm also gonna give this movie a nine point five. Boom. It's fantastic. Like um, everything in it from. Like the superhero origin storiness of it to the animation to that uh wonderful message of like being good and helping others is is awesome and using your friends to help you out is not something to be ashamed of like all of those it, it put in multiple good messages for kids which which I really appreciate and then nothing was more important than than like that connectivity like it kind yeah. of kept coming back to that mm-hmm. and then revenge is not. And yeah, angle. French is not no so good. rainbow connection. <laughs> That's what I was talking about. My friends are my power. Uh, yes. Yeah, so <laughs> nine point five. I thought you were gonna go on like a full Kermit there. <laughs> no, that was the only part I knew <laughs> at this moment in time when my brain is fried. All right, nine and a half sweep. I was gonna ask Louis about if he snores, snores, but I bet he likes it too. We liked it a lot. Next yeah. week. Well, the week after because yes, we are we are on our on our our bi-monthly schedule. That's is that right? Bi-weekly? Bi-weekly? Yes. Yep. Baby Masters comedy shows are, you know, in lives. That's yeah. cool. A Baby Master comedy show? I, 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 I didn't think that was a really hard thing. <laughs> baby, baby Masters in a comedy, comedy show. Shows. Just so you guys know, Andre's having like, when this episode comes out, he will have just finished like the craziest weekend. Yes. Because yeah. We, he's like, are you hosting? I'm, I'm hosting all weekend. Uh, all weekend at Last Unlimited in Sacramento. A three-day comedy. There's five shows. Back two shows on Friday, two shows on Saturday. Well, I'm sleepy. I'm a little tired. I got a. Really proud of him for being here. Four hours. This, though. Yeah. Because he has to go back tonight. He already went on Friday night. Mm-hmm. Today's Saturday. He's going back tonight, and then tomorrow we're gonna go watch The Lion King on Broadway. On Broadway. Woo! And then he's gonna drive back. Yeah. And then I have to do nine hours of classwork and study for my first master final. Whoa. Boom. And I have to cook a baby, so. <laughs> <laughs> and Luis is sick. So, you know. Yeah. But guess what? We love you guys so much that we're still doing this, putting out content That's for y'all. That's right. And like I said, now that we're twice a month, that means you don't have to put up with those crappy movies <laughs> coming at you hot. It's all hitters Speaking from now of. On. You know, unless I decide it's not a hitter. Movies that Luis doesn't want to do. We figured that since he's on his soccer coaching train it's and uh, so he's not going to be involved in a couple episodes for a while, that we should probably do a movie that he hates. <laughs> Dun, so we're doing it. Frozen. Frozen. Which I'll have you know will be great. Let it breathe. 
Freeze. No, stop talking. I want to freeze Let here. Freeze. I'm so excited. Let's do it. Yeah, more, yeah, more so superpowers. You'll, you will have your... Uh, oh, this is coming out on, around Christmas time. I believe Perfect. this will be out on the 10th. You know what? You yes. guys got like yes. a couple yes. weeks to watch Frozen, but I know you've seen it already, so if you want to rewatch it, you might as well do it now. <laughs> Perfect time for it. Um, That's yeah, right. We'll be talking about Frozen. And in the meantime, if you want to hang out with us, you can go to our social media. We are at the Waffle Pod on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Hit us up on Insta. Uh, send us a DM. Slide into those. DMs and uh, send us a message with telling us what you thought about the movie, what you thought our, about our, our opinions on the movie, any anything like that, what you think of uh, next week's movie Frozen, next next week's movie Frozen, um, all that stuff. You can also send an email to contact at thewaltvaultpod.com and I will possibly read that message on the show. Um, if you want to help support us, you can do it very easily by just clicking subscribe on whatever podcast platform you're listening to right now. Uh, that that's really helpful. Uh, we are on a variety of platforms. We're on Stitcher and Google Play and YouTube and iTunes, where you should go leave us a review because that helps us out a lot as well. And if you want some extra content, you can go over to patreoncom slash the Vault Vault, where we post a crack in the vault, the after show, where we talk even more about these Disney movies. Um, so yeah, go there, do all that stuff, um, help us out. We appreciate you. We love you. That's it for this week. The Vault. 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 Vault.